In the wake of the Christchurch mosque shootings, New Zealanders have been searching for answers, whether the massacre was preventable, whether there were warning signs, and how might they have gone unnoticed. They're questions we in the U.S. have asked over and over, even in just the past year alone, after the shooting in an Aurora, Illinois manufacturing business, the Thousand Oaks Bar shooting, the Pittsburgh Synagogue shooting, the shooting at the Capitol Gazette newspaper office, the Santa Fe, Texas high school shooting, and of course, the Parkland, Florida school shooting. From Columbine on, when young kids and teenagers commit such violence, many wonder, can you really tell the difference between a future mass shooter and just another troubled teen? Two experts in childhood mental health join me now. Andrea Amador is Senior Director of Behavioral Health Services for the Boston Public Schools. Andrea, it's good to meet you. Thanks for being here. Nancy Rapport is an Associate Professor of Psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. Good to see you too, Nancy. Can I start with you? How do you assess whether a kid is troubled or a shooter in waiting? What's the, what are the criteria for that? Well, fortunately, we have the Safe School Initiative, which was in 2002, that put together a protocol to help us. And what you look at is what are sort of typical um, immature behavior and then what are more troubling kinds of behavior you have. So troubling kind of behavior can be increased agitation, focus on mass shooters, um, psychos early signs of psychosis. Uh, How do you know when it crosses the line? The most important thing is context and getting multiple informants. So yeah. multiple informants means asking the teachers, the principal, the family, the friends, and putting together a composite report. You know, you took a very interesting angle on this that I had not thought about before. First of all, it seems your bumper sticker, you didn't call it, is sort of respond but not overreact. Is that a fair? Perfect. Okay, yes. well, you can use that if you want. <laughs> and what, your, your thesis here, I think, is, which I hadn't thought about before, as I say, is that the assessment process alone, if not done carefully, can do colossal damage to the kid who is just troubled and isn't a shooter in waiting. That's what you're concerned about, right? Well, I've done safety assessments for over 20 years, trained child psychiatrists and psychologists, and what is most important is to provide a culture of safety in schools. And that means, yes, if you identify a student that's aggressive and going to harm other students, you need to, to move in quickly. But if you miss, often what happens is we have kids that just do stupid stuff. And I'm not saying that kids we should endorse that, but you might have a kid who makes a hit list, but they did that because they're immature and they didn't realize it, or they talk about blowing up right. the school. And if you're not careful, you can make them worse, stigmatize them all. Is she on to something yeah. as far as you're You've been doing this 20 years here. Yeah, right? absolutely. School safety starts with school climate. It starts with relationships with kids and families. Um, it starts with understanding and knowing our kids. So when something does happen, we have a good relationship and we understand that child's behavior and can see if that's different from what he typically or she typically do does. Do we have those kind of relationships in the Boston Public Schools? I mean, are there, are there enough dollars in those schools for their to be human beings to foster those kinds of relationships? Absolutely. The Boston Public Schools has been committed for several years to creating safe and supportive schools. And we've done so by doing multiple things, uh, like creating partnerships with many agencies, including mental health partners, the Boston Police Department, Suffolk County DA's office. We have a wide range of community partners that come in and help us both prevent of violence in schools. Sandy Hook Promise is a good example. And then we have a separate set of partners that also helps us respond should something but happen. With all due respect, even mm -hmm. as good as Boston Public Schools are, lots of schools are huge. They're 2,000 kids. So you can, you know, one of the parts about Safe School Initiative is make sure that a student has a positive relationship with, with an adult. With an adult. School. And right. that's sometimes hard to do. You know, when I, when I hear you say that, and I hope what you're saying is accurate. I mean, you'd say it otherwise. But, you know, when you read the Civil Liberties yeah. Union report, about 90% of the students in this country don't have access to a counselor, psychologist, social mm -hmm. worker, nurse in the, per, the proportions on the ratios that are recommended by mm -hmm. experts. You, what people like me come away with is say, you two have a great idea, but it's not real because we're never going to fund enough uh, uh, of those kinds of people to make those kids feel supported and safe. Well, what I'd say is what's grave concern is that we are pouring money into um, detection, metal detection, and what we need are human detectors, and human detectors are caring adults that 
can track when kids are struggling. But how do you say that? I think the problem with this, and I don't, I'm not an expert in the area, needless to say, is when you go to a parent who's scared to death that their kid's unsafe, I assume, and you know this if I'm right better than, mm -hmm. if you say I have a metal detector, they may not like it, that's a tangible kind of thing where mm -hmm. they can nod and say, okay, I'm not crazy about it, but at least there's that, or there's a cop, or there's a something. When you say we're going to build relationships yes. with an adult, I appreciate that. it's a touchy-feely, I mean, I support it, it but it's harder have, to digest. I no? can appreciate that, but there are no studies that tell us that putting in a metal detector actually makes kids safer. There is exactly. a lot of research that shows that providing a social emotional curriculums which means you help kids become articulate about what scares them how they deal with it trying to figure out how many weapons are in schools can you stop on the first one do we have that kind of curriculum yeah. in Boston public schools absolutely we so do? there's the national framework for school safety really focuses on balancing physical safety with psychological safety and much of the research confirms that it's psychological safety that keeps kids safe so it's a continuum of behavioral health services, like we've done in Boston Public Schools. We have the comprehensive behavioral health model in 69 schools. And what we're doing is doing tier one prevention work, so teaching kids social skills, creating structures for support, and then finding kids early through universal behavioral health screenings and getting them support early. I love that, but isn't there a, a mm -hmm. CYA incentive in terms of school administrators, not the hers mm -hmm. of the world, but the top, to basically overreact? Exactly what you say we shouldn't do. Uh, the, overreact, what, it's better to be safe, that horrible expression, yeah. safe than sorry. So w that, that makes, I can see how you would think that looking from the outside, but it's not, it's absolutely not true. Right. When you um, create a uh, inconsistent cover your ass, oops, CYA, <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> um, uh, you actually create a culture that's less safe, right. and then you make kids not share information that could be critical to safety. So you'll have kids who will say, I'm going underground. I might be worried that a kid's carrying right. in a weapon, but I'm not going to tell anybody because I've got a, a, a trigger-happy administration. That's n and so when you show, and Cornell and Shara show this, when you actually have protocols put in place with trained staff, that can assess looking at kids and figuring out the context for their safety, you see amazing things. You see a decrease in long-term suspensions. You see a decrease in short-term suspensions. Now, we don't know about school shooting is such a so rare event that you can't do a controlled study to say putting these things into place actually keeps a school shooting from, from happening. We've got to go. It's not rare enough, but thank you for your work yep. and from your lips, as they say. Nancy, Andrea, <laughs> thank, thank you. you both. Appreciate, Appreciate your work and your time.